Across the world, many people over the years have disappeared, seemingly into thin air, with no satisfying explanation. The mystery is only deepened when neither the missing person nor their remains are ever seen again. However, there have also been many cases of people who disappear in the most mysterious of circumstances, only to reappear, sometimes decades later, in equally mysterious and intriguing circumstances. What follows are just 10 examples of mysterious disappearances cases. Some vanished into thin air, some reappeared and some were found dead. Here are 10 mysterious disappearances that were solved after decades. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on my future videos. If you've already subscribed, welcome back. 10. Yara Gambaracio On the evening of November 26, 2010, 13-year-old Yara Gambaracio disappeared while walking home in Brembe di Sopra, Italy. Her body was found in a field three months later. She had been stabbed multiple times before dying of exposure. An extensive investigation was launched, in which over 15,000 DNA tests were administered to people from the area and compared with DNA samples found at the murder scene. A man named Damiano Garinoni was found to have a similar DNA profile, so DNA tests were performed on members of his family, including one of his uncles, Giuseppe Garinoni. Even though Garinoni was deceased, investigators were able to get a DNA sample from an old postage stamp he had licked. To their astonishment, the DNA was a perfect match. The only problem was that Garinoni had died 11 years before Gambarasio's murder. The DNA match meant the killer had to be Garinoni's offspring, but his three children were eliminated as suspects. Authorities soon discovered that Garinoni had a reputation as a womanizer and may have fathered an illegitimate child with another woman. Since Garinoni worked as a bus driver and constantly interacted with the public, over 500 women had to be investigated. A woman named Esther Ertsuffi wound up matching the DNA sample. Ertsuffi had been married to her husband since 1967 and had three children with him, including a pair of twins. Ertsuffi's husband always assumed that he was the twins' biological father, but she'd once had an affair with Giuseppe Garinoni, and both twins were his illegitimate children. DNA testing confirmed that one of the twins, Massimo Giuseppe Bassetti, was Yara Gambarasio's killer, and he was charged with the murder in June 2014. 9. Michelle Whitaker Michelle Whitaker was last seen in Spartanburg, on August 16, 2002. She disappeared after getting dropped off at a truck stop by a friend, and hasn't been seen or heard from since. The friend who dropped her off at the truck stop was questioned by police, and after passing a polygraph he was ruled out as a suspect. Michelle had recently been arrested for a DUI, and had been fighting with her fought with her mother about it. She disappeared after mistakenly being released from jail early, instead of attending court-ordered treatment for drug and alcohol abuse. According to police, checks on her credit report and social security number showed no activity for years after her disappearance. Investigators were suspicious that Whitaker may have been met with foul play at the truck stop, though they didn't have any evidence to support that theory. A month after Michelle disappeared one of her co-workers, 21-year-old Heather Sellers, went missing. Police immediately focused on her boyfriend, Jonathan Vick, who was already a suspect in an unsolved 1995 rape and murder case. When police discovered the link between Vic and Michelle Whitaker, her missing persons case turned into a homicide investigation. In the summer of 2008, six years after Michelle went missing, a woman was watching an episode of Forensic Files that featured the murder conviction of Jonathan Vic. The program showed a photo of Michelle Whitaker, who police believed had been murdered by Vic. The woman was shocked, the photo wasn't of a woman who had been murdered by Vic, it was a photo of her neighbor. She called the police to let them know Whitaker was living in Oregon. In August of 2008 authorities announced that Michelle Whitaker had been found alive and well in Oregon. 8. Jacob Wetterling Jacob Wetterling was kidnapped by a masked gunman while riding bikes with his brother and a friend in October 1989. Decades passed with no trace of Jacob or any clue about what had happened to him, until the 25th anniversary of Jacob's abduction. Then police decided to further investigate an early suspect named Danny Heinrich. Heinrich had been questioned previously in connection with Jacob's disappearance, but they could never pin anything on him. Luckily, that changed with updates in forensic technology. Police matched sweat samples from a boy who was sexually assaulted to Heinrich. Police then used this evidence to get a search warrant for Heinrich's home, where child pornography was found. Danny Heinrich took a plea bargain. If he showed where Jacob's remains were and confessed his crimes, Heinrich would only be charged for possession of child porn. The Wetterling family was consulted by the police. The family agreed to the plea deal so that they would finally know what had happened to their son. Danny Heinrich was sentenced to 20 years. 7. 
Missing man is found inside deceased drag queen's trunk. Bobby Worley was born in Fairmont, North Carolina and was the youngest of seven children. In 1963, he was charged with raping a woman and was sentenced to three years at Sing Sing. Shortly after his release, Worley changed his name to Bobby Wells and went to live with one of his brothers in the Bronx. In 1968, he got into an altercation with a female neighbor and roughed up one of her kids. When the woman threatened to call the police, Worley disappeared. This was the last time his family ever saw him, and he remained a missing person for 25 years. However, in 1993, the Worley family got closure in the most unexpected way imaginable after the death of a famous drag queen named Dorian Corey. Dorian Corey was born Frederick Legg but assumed his new identity after getting breast implants during the 1960s. Corey soon became a popular figure on the New York City drag queen circuit and gained prominence after being featured in the documentary Paris is Burning. On August 29, 1993, Corey died of AIDS-related complications and left behind a Manhattan apartment. When it was being cleaned out, a large trunk was discovered. To everyone's shock, the partially mummified body of a man was inside. A fingerprint check identified the body as Bobby Worley. Worley had been shot in the back of the head and was believed to have been dead for 15 to 25 years. The exact details of how Worley's body wound up in that trunk are unknown, but before Worley's disappearance, his brother remembered him mentioning a relationship with a transvestite named Dorian. The most prevalent rumor is that Worley was shot in self-defense when he tried to assault Corey and that his mummified body was hidden inside the trunk to avoid a scandal. 6. Tanya Cock When 14-year-old Tanya Cock of McKeesport, Pennsylvania, vanished one day in 1996, it was assumed that she had run away. In part, that was true. It would come to light a decade later in 2006 that Cock had been convinced by a security guard at the middle school, Thomas Hose, to run away with him. When she did so, however, Hose would instead hold her prisoner at a house his parents owned. She would remain there for the next 10 years, and Hose would routinely rape and abuse her. After four years, Cock, under a new name, was allowed to leave the house. In 2006, she sought help, telling the owner of a deli, whom she'd become friends with, that she was being held prisoner at the hands of Hose and had been since she was a teenager. It wasn't long before Hose was arrested, charged, and eventually imprisoned. Cock was reunited with her family. 5. Judith Bellow Judith Bellow, a 28-year-old married mother of two, was last seen at 9.30 a.m. on December 13, 1993, when she left her job at the National Food Corporation in Sylvana with a friend. She didn't pick up her son from daycare, and never made it back to her home in the 19,800 block of Saratoga Drive in Stanwood, Washington. Later that day her car was found abandoned at the Stanwood Post Office, triggering an investigation that would last nearly two decades. In 2011 Judith called the Sheriff's Department after seeing her missing persons profile on the Sheriff's Office website, telling authorities she was alive and well, and living in California. The investigation into her disappearance revealed that Judith left Washington State due to domestic issues involving her husband, and had three more sons after she left. It is unknown why she did not contact her family or the sheriff's office until 2011, but has been speculated that it was out of fear of her husband. 4. Martha Jean Lambert On November 27, 1985, 12-year-old Martha Jean Lambert went missing near her home in St. Augustine, Florida. The blonde 7th grader was never seen again. With no body, strong evidence, or viable suspects, the St. John's County Sheriff's Department were left clueless about the disappearance. The case was shrouded in mystery for the next 25 years, until detectives took one last crack at it. After canvassing Martha's old neighborhood and speaking to friends and relatives, the detectives took a closer look at the missing girl's brother David, who was two years older than his sister. Detective Ty skillfully pried out information from David Lambert, now in his late 30s, using a picture of the young girl set on the interview room table as bait. After some 20 hours of questioning, the shocking truth came to light. On that fateful night in 1985, Martha and her brother went to play among the rubble of the Florida Memorial College, which had been abandoned for years, as they often did. David had given Martha money earlier to go to the store, and when she asked him for more money and he declined, she punched him. Getting angry, David pushed his sister, and she fell backward, landing on a protruding metal spike. It impaled the young girl's skull. Panicking, he buried the body in a shallow grave and kept the secret for over two decades. Given the statute of limitations and other mitigating factors, the police decided not to charge David Lambert. Martha's remains were never found due to construction in the area, so we'll never know if David's story was exactly true. 3. Gabriel Nagy 
On the early afternoon of January 21, 1987, Gabriel Nagy, a married father of two from Sydney, Australia, would call his wife to let her know her that he would be home from work early that day. Then, he vanished without a trace for almost a quarter of a century. Most would suspect, whether through foul play, his own hand, or some bizarre and tragic circumstances, that he had died shortly after that phone call. However, in 2010, just before Nagy would have been officially declared dead, a clue would suddenly leap out at the detective in charge of the cold case, Georgia Robinson. A Medicare card in Gabriel Nagy's name was eventually tracked down, leading Robinson to visit the property and its owner. The man in question was confused as to why the police were at his door. However, it didn't take long for Robinson to realize that the man was indeed the missing person from January 1987. And what's more, it would appear that he was truthful when claiming no memory of his life with a wife and two children. However, with patience and using photographs of his family from the police files, Nagy had what he would later describe as flashbulb moments, where memories began to emerge from the haze. Slowly, a timeline was pieced together. It would appear that at some point after the phone call, Nagy was attacked, as his first memory is of waking up with some kind of head injury, so bad it was bleeding. Following this, his recollection was hazy at best, with the most prominent memories suggesting he had camped in various areas in Queensland, as well as working on farms and fishing boats and even, on occasion, sleeping on the streets. Slowly, his name had come back to him. He would ultimately be reunited with his family, who continued to work to restore as much of his memory as possible. Whether a physical attack would cause him to lose such vast amounts of his memories or whether, as the family suspect, dissociative fugue is to blame, remains to be seen. The case, though, is certainly one of the most intriguing of recent times. 2. Pamela Jackson and Cheryl Miller The truth is not always as evil as it seems. When Pamela Jackson and Cheryl Miller went missing in 1971 on their way to a party, many feared the worst. But in 2014, water levels at the nearby Brule Creek dropped, revealing their vehicle. Neither foul play nor alcohol had played any role in their deaths. It had simply been a car accident. What's horrible about this case is that a man innocent of the crime spent a decade in jail for the murders, all on a falsified confession from a jailhouse snitch. The snitch handed over a tape, allegedly of David Licken admitting to killing the teenagers, but it didn't even sound like Licken's voice. Licken was released and is now filing a $400,000 lawsuit against the state. 1. Brenda Heist Another person who seemingly looked to start a new life for herself was Lidditz, Pennsylvania, resident Brenda Heist. While going through a divorce in 2002, she would simply walk away from it all, leaving her two children of 8 and 12 years old, and vanish without a trace. Following a widespread search and investigation, including the charging and clearing of her ex-husband, she was declared legally dead in 2010. That was until one day in 2013, when she wandered into a Florida police station and claimed that she was, in fact, Brenda Heist who had disappeared from Pennsylvania 11 years previously. She would claim that after driving her kids to school that day in 2002, she had gone to a park, where she sat and cried. A group of three strangers approached her and asked if she wished to join them on their way to Florida. She would explain how she just snapped and went with them, leaving her old life behind. Needless to say, she would ultimately end up using drugs and, at times, living rough on the streets. Brenda, who had been using the alias Kelsey Leanne Smith, realized she'd made a dreadful mistake by 2013 and she went to the police station and began attempts to re-establish contact with her family. However, all attempts on her part were rebuffed, with her two children, now young adults, refusing to allow her back into their lives.